He's the guy who ran the prosecutors. I asked him, was there a racial element in the killing of George Floyd? And his answer, we couldn't find any. We couldn't find a racial element in the killing of George Floyd. This from a Farrakhan follower, who you know, it means they couldn't find one witness to Derek Chauvin using a racial epithet against a black in a fit of anger. Mm -hmm. We all know everybody, when they get really steamed, they'll say anything. I mean, people re right. instantly regret what they say. They couldn't find one statement by this guy that would suggest that there was a racial element in the let me stop you there. This is a book talk with Corbin. I'm your host, and we have with us uh, David Horowitz, a New York Times bestselling author and unquestionably one of the great uh, intellectuals of our time, scholars, writers of our time. Um, I also just want to briefly talk, not talk about it, but show this book here. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, it's just to let you know I've been a longtime fan. And, uh, Indoctrination You, The Left's War Against Academic Freedom. Any book you buy by uh, David Horowitz is going gonna, is gonna to enlighten you. Mr. Horowitz, uh, let's go on to another comment before we talk about uh, Breonna Taylor. Um, this is a quote out of your article. Today, Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream has been realized. Systemic racism was outlawed almost 60 years ago by the Civil Rights Act of 1964. There has, there has never been so diverse and equal a society as America. It has elected a black American to its highest office twice. Uh, there is no other country in the world that has elected the, number, the member of a previously oppressed minority as its president. Or as its national security advisor, or as its attorney general. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's true. Look, the, the chief racist in the country is Joe Biden, who said on his inauguration day that America, every aspect of American life is touched by systemic racism. The Civil Rights Act outlawed systemic racism. If there was one, there are 18,000 local police departments, even if there was one rotten police department that was racist, if there was like one case of systemic racism, there would be a tsunami of lawsuits mm -hmm. because it's illegal. There would be millions of dollars forked over because it's illegal. There are no, and you know, let's say, like most Democrats seem to think these days that all white people are racist. Assume that's true. There are thousands of black attorneys, district attorneys, attorney general, mayors, city council members, members of Congress, police chiefs. Almost every major city has a black police chief. How would it be possible to carry out systemic racism unless all those people are race traders? which is something that the left is, says all the time. But it's ridiculous. There's money involved. You got a, a case of systemic racism, you make yourself rich. Mm. It's really simple. Good point. Look, I quoted in my book the summary of it. You can see institutional racism is illegal. It's as simple as that. Right. Well, Dinesh D'Souza in his book, the I think it's called The End of Racism, makes the makes the same point. I mean, and just makes the same point. And here in Louisville, time and time again, people stand up and say, you know, where is the systemic racism? Name the bank, name the company. And it's always inadvertent, what, unconscious racism, unconscious bias. Right. I mean, come on, that gives the whole game away. But people go along with it because uh, I know there's a lot of white people that feel guilty uh, about black slavery. Now, look, slavery is an unpleasant institution, putting it mildly. Mm -hmm. But it existed for 3,000 years in all societies and was considered normal. It was never denounced as immoral by anybody, not Jesus, 
not Moses, nobody, until white Christian males at the end of the 18th century, Wilberforce in England and uh, Thomas Jefferson in America said it's immoral. Everybody, every human being has a God-given right to liberty. That's it, folks. That was the end of slavery. Slavery existed in Africa for a thousand years before a white person ever set foot there. It was not, it really didn't have a racial element uh, un, until the middle of the 19th century. And it's ironic, the South um, was caught in a bind. The, the slave South wanted to have their cause uh, defending, uh, you know, the constitutional and the, and the founding. They wanted to be patriots. But there in America's birth certificate was all men are created equal and have this God-given right to liberty. So they had to argue that Blacks were inferior. That's where it comes from mm -hmm. in order to make their case. Because if all men are created equal and they have this God-given right, that slavery is immoral. Um, the, the, the thing is, and I, I don't really, I, 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 well, I usually put things very bluntly. America is God's gift to black people. As I say, slavery existed for a thousand years in Africa. If, if slavery is anybody's original sin, it's Africa's. Not, yes. uh, America inherited a slave system from the English and, the, and their our founders declared slavery immoral uh, against the, really against the word of God um, at the outset. And within a little over a generation, it was abolished. Within 20 years of the signing of the constitution, um, slavery was abolished in all the Northern colonies. Why wasn't it also abolished in the South at the same time? Well, you know, there's all these bright-eyed, bushy-tailed young people who've been to these indoctrination schools uh, who think they're morally superior to the founders of America um, by being anti-slavery. Here's the reality. The two greatest powers in the world at the time were England, a slave-owning empire, and Spain. And Spanish slavery was far, far worse than the English version in America. And what do I mean by far, far worse? Um, the island of Hispaniola, where, where Columbus landed, had 8 million Arawaks. And within, within a, a, a century, well, it was less than a century, they were all dead. Mm. Spanish slavery killed people, Portuguese slavery. In Brazil, they had to replace the slave population every year uh, because they died, it was so brutal. But in America, the slave trade was outlawed in 1807. And between, so you have a, a benchmark there, between 1807 and 1860, you couldn't import slaves. And yet the American slave population grew four times there were a million slaves in 1807, and there were 4 million in 1860. So wow. I, I think it's Madison who said that slavery was the worst dominion of man over man, the most horrific. But if the North had abolished slavery in 1776 or 87, the South would have joined forces with the British or the Spaniards for that matter. And they would have won the war. They would have destroyed. We almost lost the Civil War when it was fought 50 years later. And slavery could have existed for another 100 years. So people don't take into account the real world well, possibilities that people were facing at this time. So I, I, I just I want this one other thing to register. Here you had 360,000 white Americans who gave their lives to free the slaves. That's, if you could find me a brown, and, and you know, slavery still exists in Africa. Muslim slavery is all over the world. If you could find me a brown or a black society 
where you had even 100,000 people volunteer or be drafted to liberate white slaves, we could have another conversation. But black people should own this country. It's theirs as much as any, there's nobody to challenge them. And yet the sinister left wants to turn them against their own country. It's just terrible. Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Um, go to my website, uh, booktalkwithcorbin.com, and you will be able to find other uh, great interviews we had with Mr. David Horowitz. Um, Mr. Horowitz, we, we, we only got a, couple, a few minutes left. Let you want to tell it quickly. In your book, I Can't uh, Breathe, you sort of profile 26 people. You know, they were like, the, as you put it, the poster children for uh, Black Lives Matter. And one of them was Breonna Taylor. It's very important to us, obviously, for obvious reasons here in Louisville, Kentucky. Talk a little bit about what you said about the Breonna Taylor case. Yeah, Breonna. Okay, open the what, 26 billboards, one for every year, Breonna Taylor's life, Char calling for the indictment of the police, obviously for murder, um, and uh, claim that Breonna Taylor was killed in her sleep in her bed, an innocent person. Nothing could be further from the truth. Breonna Taylor, and she's always described as a medical technician, but she hadn't worked at that for three years. Breonna Taylor was the accomplice of a major drug dealer in Louisville. Uh, and, and let's pause for a second. This guy's business was killing black people, <laughs> selling yes. heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, whatever, to black Americans. That's his business. That's what Breonna Taylor helped him with. And how did she do that? She used her bank account to hide his criminal uh, profits. She used her mailing address uh, to be part of his distribution apparatus for the drugs he was dealing. Um, she rented a car for him where a dead body turned up in the trunk, which should have been a, you know, people do stupid things for the heart. And we, we've all done it. But this should have been a warning to her, at least. The police had a no-knock warrant, but they announced their presence. Yes. So they showed up at her door. And and what what happened was that Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend, her current boyfriend, jumped out of bed and the boyfriend, like an idiot, fired at the police at the door in the direction of the door where the sound came from. Well, police, they have families they want to come home to alive. So they have this saying, it's called pray and spray. And the idea is if you're being fired on in the dark where you can't see where the shots are coming from, you don't know how many people are shooting at you, you don't know where precisely they are located, you pray and you spray the area with bullets in the hopes you'll kill them before they kill you. It's, it's as straightforward as that. Yes. And yet the Democrats, the worst enemy of black people is the Democrat Party absolute worst. Every inner city in America is controlled 100% by, by, by the Democrat Party and has been for 50 to 100 years. Every injustice in the inner city that policy can affect, Democrats are 100% responsible for. And here's one of them. They gave $12 million to Breonna Taylor's family for wrongful death. It wasn't a wrongful death. She was killed resisting arrest by, by police that didn't even see. I mean, if they were out to kill black people, why not shoot the black boyfriend first? It, none of it makes any sense. Yes. And George Taylor's family got $27 million for a lifelong drug addict and criminal. Why is George Floyd? Why are there statues of George Floyd? Uh, he was a scumbag. That's who George Floyd was. It's an insult to black people to make him a typical black person. He'd been arrested nine times in addition, in between whatever, the ages of 13 and 46, five years taken out of commission because he was in jail. What for? For robbing a black mother by pointing his gun at her womb 
while his gang members 